Too often we focus on delivery culture and neglect creativity. Well, isn't creativity at the heart of innovation? And if so, how do you get better at it? If you want to be more creative, do these three things. That's this week on the Badass Agile Podcast. Greetings, team. Welcome to the Badass Agile Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Williams. Hello, crew. Welcome back. Good to see you all. Hope you're having a great week. I want to thank you once again for tuning in week in and week out and just being part of the movement. Now, this week, talk about one of my favorite subjects. Creativity is in my DNA. I've been a creative since I was a little kid. And I'm often surprised at how little attention we pay to creativity because we assume that it's an artistic pursuit and therefore has no bearing on delivery culture. It actually has a ton, if you think about it. If you're struggling with a problem in delivery, finding workarounds, solving blockers, motivating people, all of those are creative challenges. Not to mention the fact that innovation itself relies on a fresh supply of new ideas. Now, for me, creativity is part of my every day, so I want to share with you three things that have worked really well for me in increasing my creative output over the years. But first, let's remember why we're here. To create an elite tribe of leaders who truly serve their clients and communities by doing what matters and what works, relentlessly chasing value and excellence like a badass. There's so many resources about what you need to do to be agile, but we're focused on who you need to become in order to lead teams. So let's hammer down those fundamentals to create a truly unstoppable force in this industry. And remember guys, if this helps you, tell your friends. Okay, let's dig in. How do you become more creative and therefore more innovative, better problem solvers, better radical thinkers? Here's three things you need to do. Number one, live mindfully. Now you don't have to meditate in order to live mindfully, although it helps. Living mindfully refers to just paying attention to where you are and what you're doing. Mindfulness can be as simple as taking time to observe. Look around you and notice things. Watch. Pay attention. Force yourself to see objects, colors, movements that you never noticed before. A simple experiment is to do it while you're walking. While you're walking, on your normal route to work even, You'll be astounded at how many things you notice that have always been there that you have never once looked at or thought about. It could also be taking a moment to be grateful for the things that are going well in your life, the things that you have, the things that you're not lacking. Or another way to be more mindful is to just spend a little bit of time contemplating. Take a quote or a thought or an event that happened and spend 10 minutes chewing over it in your mind, paying attention to the thoughts that come up. The secret to mindfulness is rejecting distractions. Now, it's natural to be distracted. In fact, it's impossible not to be distracted. But when distraction arises, the healthy habit is to simply repoint your attention to whatever it is you were focusing on. Watching the birds, thinking about the things you're grateful for, listening or reading or observing carefully, or carving out some kind of philosophy or argument in your mind. Rejecting all distractions is also known in the modern age as being present. Now, the reason why this practice matters is that it keeps you observant when really cool things happen that spark your creativity naturally. A lot of people talk about waiting for the muse to come, and the muse does come from time to time. But when it does, you kind of have to be ready for it. So building a habit of paying attention to what is going on with your senses and in your brain is a really key component of staying disciplined enough to make something out of the inspirations that pop up all around you. Now, there's some other things that will help in the mindfulness category. Number one, keeping a positive mental attitude at all times. Now that you're observing and being present, check your thought process. It's really difficult to be creative. If your mind is negative, shut down, moody, depressed. The only good thing creatively that comes up when you spend a lot of time in a bad mood is really great breakup music or bad poetry, which may or may not be useful for your purposes. So 
why is to just check your state and see if you're in a positive frame of mind. Another thing you can try is asking yourself questions. Questions like, what are some problems that need to be solved? Now, these can be very general and based on what you experience, like what you as a customer wish you could experience, what you as an employee wish you could experience. Those can be powerful questions, but sometimes you may want to know, for example, what do financial institutions really struggle with? What is the number one problem they wish they could solve and haven't yet done it? And when you ask questions like that, the kinds of answers that pop up in your head will surprise you. It's worth noting here that most creativity is simply stapling together two things that haven't yet been stapled together. Most solutions, for example, the electric car, take two well-known paradigms like the automobile and eco-friendly non-fossil fuel power sources and blend them together. The challenges that come out of that pairing require the logical, intelligent, engineering mind to fix. But without the creative spark to mash them together, there would be no innovation. Okay. Here's the second thing that you can do to increase your creative output. Be around inspiring things always. At least 10% of your day should be spent either reading, writing, having inspiring conversations with inspiring people, having exciting new experiences that challenge you and stretch your frame of reference, stretch your boundaries, or listening to inspiring people. That could be real people in your community that you know, or it could be TED Talks, podcasts, videos, seminars, you name it. Having fresh perspectives, a consistent stream of great ideas, positivity, and hope injected into your consciousness will supercharge your creativity. Now, I do find that reading a nonstop flood of memes on social media doesn't quite do the trick. You do become desensitized to words. So I actually highly recommend that you either listen to or watch presentations or speeches. Because you know what affects us as much as the words that people speak? is the tonality and the body language and the energy that they bring to those words. All right, so find at least 20 minutes a day. You can do it on the commute, on your daily jog or walk, Right before bed, you can find 20 minutes to surround yourself with inspiring things. Now, the third thing you can do to spark up your creativity might surprise you. You don't hear this one a lot, but I want you to seek out victory. There is something about triumph that floods the system with positivity and courage and pride that seem to generate a flood of ideas for me. I'll be specific. If I finished a really great coaching session and I really feel and I know that I've impacted somebody, I still to this day get really, really excited. And when I do, the ideas for the best podcasts and shows that I've ever written, the best business ideas I've come up with, the best turns of phrase, even the best musical ideas come while I'm riding the crest of a recent victory. Now, some people might call that inviting or invoking the muse. But I just happen to notice that the muse visits more often when I've just knocked one out of the park. So in the same way that you have to immerse yourself in mindfulness and immerse yourself in inspiration and positivity, you also have to immerse yourself in situations where you can win. So what is it that you're natively good at? What is one thing you do at home, at work, or beyond where you know you can nail it? where every time you do it, you feel really good about yourself. You feel a sense of pride. You feel a sense of accomplishment. You feel a sense of limitless. Spend time there and watch the doors of creativity open up. And if you are mindful and you can take a few moments to once again eliminate all distractions and write down some of these great ideas that pop up, then they're not lost. Everything that we just talked about requires two other things in order to work. Number one, you have to have access to ways of recording your inspiration and creativity when it does happen. I have little microphones and recording systems in every room of my house, in the car, in my briefcase. I've got some kind of mini recorder or microphone set up ready to go. I speak way faster than I type. So this allows me to get my ideas down at the speed of light and then I can transcribe them later if I need to. The other thing that you must have is a habit 
of collecting these ideas, yes, but also remember you got to go back and groom them just like a good backlog. You got to take the good ones and bubble them up to the top. And if they stay there for a long time, they're probably your best ideas. Other ones that you come up with in the cold light of day or after 24 hours may not seem all that exciting anymore. And that's okay. Remember, with creativity, the purpose is not to come up with the one killer idea, but to come up with lots of little ideas so you can get to the best ones. So what if you were to try this for the next four weeks? Let me know what happens for you. Does this make you more creative by being more mindful, by surrounding yourself with inspiration and seeking out opportunities for victory, and then assuming you're prepared and fastidious about grooming those ideas? How does this change your creative pipeline? Does this give you new ideas for improvements at work? Does this give you a fountain of new ways to motivate and inspire other people? Does this make you more artistic? Does this make you more innovative? Does it create a fresh supply of ideas and experiments that could benefit you, your clients, or your community? I want to hear all about it. Folks, thank you for listening. You can reach out at badassagile.com or find me on Twitter at badass underscore agile. I look forward to seeing you next time. And until then, stay badass.